Hello students, in today's video we are going to discuss pharmacology of pyoglitazone. Pyoglitazone is an oral anti-diabetic drug that is used in the management of type 2 diabetes mellitus. Now pyoglitazone belongs to the class of thiazolidine dions. Now in order to understand pharmacology of pyoglitazone, let's quickly understand how insulin is important for regulating concentration of glucose in the blood. So look at this figure. Now after meals, after the consumption of food, levels of glucose rise in the blood. Now this increased glucose in the blood stimulates increased release of insulin by the pancreas. Now as you can see here, insulin is essential for the transportation of glucose inside the cell. So insulin is required for the uptake of glucose from the blood by the body cells. Now as the glucose moves inside the cell, increased levels of glucose reduce in the blood and they come back to normal. Thus insulin is essential for regulating the glycemic control. Now, in addition to this, insulin is an anabolic hormone and insulin is essential for the synthesis of glycogen in liver and skeletal muscles and also for the synthesis and storage of triglycerides in the adipose tissues. Now, type 2 diabetes mellitus is caused due to insulin resistance that is reduced functioning or reduced sensitivity of insulin that means the insulin becomes less effective another reason for type 2 diabetes mellitus could be reduced secretion of insulin or both so because of this levels of uh, glucose in the blood they remain high and uh, pyoglitazone is an oral anti-diabetic drug that increases insulin sensitivity or that reduces insulin resistance in the adipose tissues, muscles and the liver. It increases the effectiveness or it increases the sensitivity of insulin. So uptake of glucose by the body cells improves and thus pyoglitazone improves glycemic control. Uh, now let's understand mechanism of action of pyoglitazone. So look at this figure. This is an adipose cell or a fat cell. And this is the nucleus of uh, uh, adipose cell. Uh, now this is a nuclear receptor, PPAR gamma. Uh, that is nuclear uh, peroxisome proliferator activated receptor gamma. In short, PPAR gamma. Now PPAR gamma is located on the uh, nucleus. Now this is located on the nucleus of fat cells, muscles as well as on the liver. Now pyoglitazone is a selective agonist of PPAR gamma. So pyoglitazone binds to PPAR gamma and stimulates it. On activation PPAR gamma undergoes dimerization. It forms a dimer with the retinoid X receptor in short RXR. Now this dimer acts on the DNA and leads to increased transcription of genes required for the synthesis of proteins. So there is increased synthesis of proteins like FATP that is a fatty acid transport protein, GLUT4 that is glucose transporter 4 protein and uh, proteins like lipoprotein lipase. Now these proteins regulate glucose and fatty acid metabolism thereby causing increased uptake of glucose from the blood by the body cells. Thus pyoglitazone by synthesizing these proteins increase insulin sensitivity. It makes the insulin more effective. Uh, now let's discuss pharmacological actions of uh, pyoglitazone. Now as already discussed, pyoglitazone increases synthesis of proteins uh, required for the uh, metabolism of glucose and fatty acid. So there is increased synthesis of GLUT4 that is glucose transporter 4 lipoprotein lipase and proteins like fatty acid transporter protein in short FATP. 
So now look at this uh, uh, figure. This is a fat cell or this is an adipocyte. Now GLUT4 that is a glucose transporter 4 mediates transportation of glucose from the blood to the body cells uh, like uh, adipocytes and also skeletal muscles. So this results in increased uptake of glucose by the adipocytes and also by the skeletal muscles. Now in the adipocytes this uh, glucose is converted to glycerol. Now pyoglitazone also causes increased synthesis of another protein that is lipoprotein lipase. Lipoprotein lipase is an enzyme uh, that causes cleavage or that breaks triglycerides in the blood to fatty acids. So uh, the levels of fatty acids in the blood increase while triglycerides in the blood reduce. Now, in addition to this, another protein synthesized by pyoglitazone, that is the fatty acid transporter protein, uh, in short FATP, this FATP, it uh, transports fatty acids, these fatty acids uh, from the blood inside the adipocytes. Now, these fatty acids combine with the glycerol to produce triglycerides and these triglycerides are then stored in the adipose tissue and this increases the fat mass and therefore increase the body weight. So, this is how pyoglitazone by synthesizing proteins like GLUT4 increases the uptake of glucose by the adipose tissue also increases the uptake of glucose by the skeletal muscles. So this reduces the concentration of glucose in the blood. In addition to this, uh, proteins like FATP are responsible for increased uh, synthesis and storage of uh, triglycerides in the adipose tissue. Now, in addition to this, process of uh, hepatic gluconeogenesis is also suppressed by pyoglitazone. So this reduces the synthesis of glucose in the liver which further leads to fall in the levels of glucose in the blood. So this is how pyoglitazone by causing increased transcription of genes required for glucose and fatty acid metabolism increase uh, insulin sensitivity uh, or uh, in other words, we can say uh, it reduces insulin resistance and improves uh, glycemic control. So, this is the, uh, these are the pharmacological actions of pyoglitazone. Uh, now, let's summarize clinical benefits of pyoglitazone. So, pyoglitazone improves glycemic control, thereby cause lowering of uh, glycated hemoglobin in the blood. Now, as insulin sensitivity increases, levels of insulin reduce in the blood. Now, as already discussed, pyoglitazone breaks triglycerides in the blood and thereby reduce serum triglycerides. Now, pyoglitazone also increases concentration of HDL, that is high density lipids or good lipid in the blood. Now, increase in HDL is produced due to the action of pyoglitazone on PPAR alpha receptors and also due to increased expression of reverse cholesterol transporters and some apoproteins. Uh, now, let's study pharmacokinetic profile of pyoglitazone. Pyoglitazone is well absorbed orally. It has a very slow onset of action and this maximum effect develops gradually over 1 to 3 months. Its plasma half-life is uh, 3 to 5 hours and duration of action is 24 hours. Now, since its, it's uh, duration of action is 24 hours, it is given once a day with or without food. Now, pyoglitazone is more than 99% bound to plasma proteins and it is metabolized in the liver by cytochrome enzymes namely CYP2C8 and CYP3A4. It is excreted in the feces. Now, let's see to the indications of uh, pyoglitazone. Pyoglitazone is an oral anti-diabetic drug and uh, pyoglitazone is used as a second line or as a third line therapy in the management of uh, type 2 diabetes mellitus. Now primarily pyoglitazone is used to supplement 
sulfonyl ureas or metformin. That means it is used along with sulfonyl ureas or metformin. Now adverse effects of uh, pioglitazone. Now very important, pioglitazone increases the sodium reabsorption in collecting tubules of the kidney. Now since sodium is reabsorbed, there is increased in the absorption of water. So this causes increased water retention and increases the volume of blood. So pioglitazone causes plasma volume expansion. Now increase in the volume of plasma due to water retention causes edema uh, or we can say results in swelling. Now this can also cause macular edema that is swelling in the part of retina. Now in addition to this increased in the plasma volume and increase in the fat mass leads to weight gain. Pioglitazone can also cause headache, myalgia uh, that is a muscle pain and mild anemia. In few patients it can cause uh, hepatotoxicity so monitoring of uh, liver function is advised. Now since pioglitazone increases the plasma volume it uh, increases the risk of congestive heart failure. It can also cause bone demineralization which increases the risk of fractures especially in the elderly woman. And uh, pioglitazone can also increase the risk of bladder cancer. Then contraindications. Now since pioglitazone is uh, excessively metabolized in the liver, uh, it is contraindicated in the liver disease. Uh, since it causes water retention, it is uh, it should not be prescribed in congestive heart failure. Then it is uh, contraindicated in pregnancy, type 1 diabetes mellitus, then uh, in macular edema and in patients with known hypersensitivity to pioglitazone. Uh, now let's study a few important drug interactions of pioglitazone. First interaction is with insulin. Now it has been found that the greater fluid retention, weight gain and precipitation of congestive heart failure occurs when pioglitazone is combined with insulin. So avoid combining pioglitazone with insulin. Now there is increased fluid retention when pioglitazone is combined with pregabalin. Now in addition to this, to this Failure of oral contraceptive therapy may occur during pioglitazone therapy. Now further, risk of hypoglycemia increases when pioglitazone is given with drugs like other anti-diabetic medications for example sulfonyl ureas, uh, then with drugs like androgens, aspirin, then uh, SSRIs that is uh, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors etc. Now pioglitazone uh, by decreasing the insulin resistance may cause ovulation in premenopausal women with an ovulation. That means uh, premenopausal women uh, who do not ovulate they can also start ovulating because of the reduced insulin resistance and this is especially seen during polycystic ovarian syndrome. So occurrence of uh, ovulation increases the risk of pregnancy in premenopausal women so it should be um, given carefully, it should be uh, taken carefully. So besides these drug interactions, pioglitazone also shows a number of other drug interactions. So this is in brief on pharmacology of uh, pioglitazone. Please note that the information provided in this video is only for informative academic purpose. For use of pioglitazone or for the treatment of type 2 diabetes mellitus, consult your physician. If you find the video useful, kindly like, subscribe and share this video. Thanks for watching this video.